Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here with you each and every Sunday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. on Bigfoot Country to bring you, the landowner, the information you need regarding natural gas development. And in case you're unaware, we come early to my favorite part of the show where I get to say with great pride that I, Doug Clark, the Clark Law Firm, has not, does not, and will not, never have, never, ever will represent a gas or pipeline company. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, royalty owner for such items as, of course, and as always, oil and gas lease negotiations, reviews and consultations on any and all oil and gas contracts agreements, pipeline agreements, waterline agreements, unitization issues, royalty issues, royalty deduction issues, estate planning for clients, my clients in the Marcella Shell or people in Marcellus or Utica Shell development. It is important that you have a proper plan in place. So we're doing more and more of that. Surface use agreements, meter site, compressor agreements, roadway agreements, storage agreements, you name it, any and all contract representation related to oil and gas development here in Pennsylvania. And of course, only from the landowner and royalty owner side. Practice is limited in that fashion. Also, I've been talking recently and I'm going to tell you guys, you know, when a topic comes up, just because I do a show on this same topic or a topic, maybe three out of four shows, well, the reason why I do that is because it's hot. It is a hot topic. It's something we need to address, address and we need to get the information out to you. And we need to, and a lot of times, in most cases, we can't cover this in one show. So I represent people. You'll hear me talk about this in other shows and in future shows, and you'll hear me talk about it today. And this is so important, too, because you never know when the knock on the door is going to happen or when something comes in the mail and it, you receive a lease amendment modification ratification. I deal with these all the time in locations all across Pennsylvania where gas is being developed. Everyone must know that if you get a request to amend, modify, and ratify your gas lease, please put that pen down. Please pick up the phone, call me, but if for some reason you don't want to call me, please call someone who knows what they're doing, who wants to help you. These lease amendments, modifications, and ratifications are the new big, big thing. And you need to, whether you maximized your lease on your other opportunity, maximized your pipeline agreement, you need to, you must maximize any potential leverage and opportunity that you have by way of a lease amendment, modification, and ratification. You need to, you must understand what you are signing. Why are you amending and modifying your lease? And this is key. And this is something that nobody even thinks about. Why are you ratifying your lease? Ratify, ratify, ratify. Why are you ratifying your lease? Why? And here's a bigger question that many people have no idea about. And we got to get this information. What effect is your signature on that document when in that document, and it may only be a small little line, where you say, I hereby ratify the existing oil and gas lease or the gas lease of such and such a date as being existing in effect and not in breach. You must understand if there is any reason that you should not be ratifying that existing lease. You have to because I am telling you that people will get People are going to get, people have already received, and more and more and more people, not just one or two, many people across Pennsylvania, and you might be one of them. You really might be one of them 
who are going to get lease amendment modification and ratification requests. And that reason why they're giving you that request, it'll be presented as, oh, this is great for you, this is great for you, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing. But as we all know, we have to dig deeper. We have to dig deeper. We have to dig deeper. So you may find out through such a service as a review and consultation, but you may find out that your old lease has actually expired or that it most likely expired. You may find out that you, that the company cannot develop your lease or your property unless you sign this document. And you may say, well, then I better hurry up and sign. No, 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 no. And you may have great leverage to negotiate, to negotiate a lump sum cash payment, to negotiate potentially an increase in royalty percentage. Yes, I have done that for clients. We've done that. To negotiate new terms, new addendum terms to be added into the agreement, to negotiate a new royalty calculation method. Yes, we've done that too and to negotiate to eliminate the deductions. That's a possibility. Again, nothing is any specific advice or specific promises when we do the radio show, but I am telling you that all of those things have been done to a great, great, in times, tremendous, tremendous benefit to the client, to the landowner, to the royalty owner. But I'll tell you this, if every one of those people, and I mean this, every single one of them, were presented with these documents and encouraged to sign, and had they not put the pen down, picked up the phone, gave me a call, did a review and consultation, they would have signed for zero benefit. They may have what's called revived a terminated lease, which means that let's say you have 100 acres and the, the uh, market rate at this time in your area is $2,000 an acre and 15%. Well, if you just picked up the pen and started writing, you get nothing. You keep your old 12.5% lease, full deductions, terrible royalty calculation method. You get no money whatsoever. And you bought into what was said to you by the landman who works for the company, not you, the landowner. You go into that and you say, oh, okay, well, hey, that sounds good. This will make me rich. Let me hurry up and sign. No, we can't do that. You need to understand why is this being requested and what is my leverage? And we have to maximize your leverage. So back to my, you have a hundred acres and say you have 12 and a half percent under an old lease and you're given an amendment and ratification modification. I'm telling you light bulbs. If you listen to this show, light bulbs should be going off above your head. You should at least have a small grin because you're going to say, Hey, this may be an opportunity. They are not asking me to sign an amendment to change my lease, to modify my lease, to ratify my old lease if there's not a reason. And it's not going to be a reason because it's just good for me. So if your lease expired or if you have great arguments that your lease expired, you may be able to get a new lease. And in times we absolutely get new leases. So if you have a hundred, a hundred acres, and the market's $2,000 and 15%. Now you say, hey, I may do a new lease. And if you did that, because you didn't, you didn't pick up the pen, you picked up the phone and you find out, hey, my lease is terminated. You now pick up $200,000 that you wouldn't have had if you just picked up the pen and you increase your royalty percentage to 15% and you probably, not for sure, but probably get a better royalty calculation method. The way in which your royalties are calculated are critical more than ever, more than ever. Identify, understand the loopholes. And unless you do this all the time, I'm telling you, I don't think you're going to be able to do it. And it's no offense to you, but I'm telling you, there are loopholes that these companies use that we need to try to close. Or if you can't close them, you need to identify them. You need to identify the impact that they're going to have on you as you go forward in your royalty payments and weigh that impact as to should I sign this understanding what I'm signing. 
I don't know why. I don't know when people, you know, when do we start signing documents that we don't understand? Yeah, it's it's baffling because we're doing that with these gas companies who are very intelligent, that are multi-billion dollar market cap companies, and we're just signing documents based upon the nice guy who's in our kitchen with an energy company. Let's put the pen down. Let's do, again, a review consultation. Give us a call. Let's talk about why you're being asked to sign an amendment and modification. Why? And let's dang well make sure your lease has not expired or terminated. We have to do this. You have to do this. And whether you call me, and I'd love to hear from you, give us a call at the Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. Give us a call, Doug Clark, Clark Law Firm. Get a review and consultation. Almost always take two hours or less. You send me in the documents. I review them. We do them in by telephone, anywhere across Pennsylvania, anywhere across the country, and even in other countries. And we can do them in my office. Love for you to come see me. Love for you to come see me. We'll sit there. We'll talk about everything. I review everything, and I use all my experience and information and everything I've learned to give you the best advice I possibly can with the sole motivation of helping you. The sole motivation motivation of helping you the sole motivation of making sure that you are not taken advantage of the sole motivation let me say that again that you're not taken advantage of versus the other side what is their motivation is it to make sure that you're not taken advantage of i mean look around we know the answer to that no get a review nobody nobody should sign first off any oil and gas related agreement or contract without a review consultation but boy i'm talking about lease amendments and modifications today and ratifications the r word we have to make sure that you are getting reviews and consultations and understand why you are being asked to sign this document and understand your leverage because it may be substantial. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station where we're giving you, the landowner, the information you need to know. So, again, these reviews, consultations are great great services that I do them all the time and it's a great way to at least find out you know what do you have presented what are your options where do you go from there and if you want to have additional representation I would love to help you if we can get if you get everything you need out of review and consultation that's great too but I'm gonna tell you this the worst thing that can happen you spend one to two hours typically and you get all your questions answered you understand the document, you understand your leverage, and if you decide to sign, now you can feel comfortable with what you're signing. But the sad thing, and I know it happens all the time, I see it after the fact, people sign amendments, modifications, and ratifications when their lease has actually, when it happens that their lease is terminated, and they revive it and bring it to life, and they stop themselves from getting a new lease, getting additional money, getting a better royalty calculation method and getting potentially a higher royalty percentage. Like that's crazy. We have to make sure you have this information before you sign. And I know sometimes it's a broken record for me, but I, boy, you know, I wouldn't say this if I didn't mean it. And I see it all the time. We have to stop signing these quick side note. You know, I, I love Tioga County and I'm telling you, as I say all the time, I'm going to do everything I can to change what's going on up there. And we are, and we are, but let me say this. So you're not in Tioga County and this can spill into other counties. So I'm just talking about Tioga for a second. You are not yet, yet seeing these amendment and ratifications as something that's commonly being presented to you. But let me give you some prediction. You will. You will. So you need to know 
when you start getting amendments and modifications, put that pen down and pick up the phone because there are reasons and many. Look, oh, okay, sorry. I get so fired up when I talk about these shut in vertical wells in Tioga County with Sweppy out of my mind drives me crazy and I'm sure it drives you crazier if you're in that situation. So what's going to happen? This is my prediction. If and when they go to move forward, they know already that they may have breached leases and we're fighting those. So I want to hear, well, that's a different thing. I'll talk about that later, but they know. Sweppy or whoever ultimately goes to develop it knows that these leases may have been breached. So I predict as they go forward to develop, you are going to see in Tioga County many, probably hundreds of lease amendments, modifications, and ratifications. And if you ever do one thing, put the pen down, put it down because when you're given at least amendment modification and ratification, it's telling you that number one, there is a problem and they need you to correct it. So we need to understand what that problem is and we need to understand, did your lease terminate? Does your lease have provisions that they have to amend in order to develop, which they want to do? And so what can you negotiate there? And usually it's going to be something we've dealt with before that I've dealt with before, not you sitting there in this one time experiencing experience, having no idea, you know, how does a company do this? What kind of games are being played? What are techniques and negotiation? What is the leverage? What are they saying to me? What can I do better? Oh, this is all they ever do. Oh, they're not going to give me any money. Okay. I mean, put the pen, pick up the pen. No, 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 no. Again, we know better. We know better. We hear this is all we're ever going to pay. We hear the words and then they go out of our head. We hear, we're not offering any consideration or money for this. We hear those words and then we let them go out of our head. Just because they say that doesn't mean that's the end. Real quick, literally in the last few weeks, client comes, amendment, uh, modification, ratification, just one small part of it is they were offered a offered no money actually to sign and now they're doing it and they're getting uh, a pretty darn nice chunk of money to sign oh and by the way the document has been changed entirely it's been limited and it's going to actually do things that are beneficial for the client and they're going to get a nice chunk of cash up front to sign or when the landman came to the house who works for the company not them the landowner they could have just said, oh, well, well, okay, oh, we're, you're not paying anything? Oh, we can't negotiate this? Oh, oh, okay, give me my pen. Give me my pen. Well, thankfully, they understand that just because somebody says something, we're not going to pay anything. This is all we ever paid. We're not going to negotiate. Just because you say something doesn't mean it's true. You need to find out what is true. And we have this history where we have seen companies make statements saying things were going to happen and things didn't happen. I've, I've literally talked to many, many landmen and company people saying we won't pay anything. We won't pay more than this. And then the client be paid more and many times substantially more than zero or whatever they were offered. So we got to stop that. We can't make it that easy where you just simply say as a company, huh, we're not going to give you any money. Ah, that's all we ever pay. Go ahead and sign. Real, you know, just with a matter of three weeks, beginning to end client pipeline agreement. All we're ever going to pay is blank dollars. That's all we're ever going to pay. Never pay any more. Ever going to pay. I communicate with the company. Ah, that's all we're going to pay. That's all we're going to pay. That's a great deal. That's a great deal. Within three weeks, the offer went up by more than double and the clients are extremely happy. Went up for more than double and instead of having unlimited pipelines, we limited the two pipelines. Instead of, listen to this too, frack produced flow back water going across their property and pipelines, that's gone too. All kinds of limitations and over double the money. Or they could have just listened to the landman who works for the company, not them, the landowner. 
and said, oh, oh, well, okay. So that's all you're going to pay. Can't do anything here. Give me the pen. But no, they did a review and consultation. And maybe in that review and consultation, maybe, and boy, this is unlikely, but maybe we would have said, you know what? There isn't anything we can do. And here's the situation. You can go ahead and sign. You've maximized this situation. You're in the best position possible. Maybe. And in that, if that's the case, then you spent you know one to two hours of time and money and you got that insurance, what you have. Or you find out, listen, this is bogus. You have great arguments. You have great leverage. And within a month, you can more than double your price and make all kinds of modifications and changes. And it all starts with the review and consultation. So before you sign any document or when you're presented with any document, as you know, put that pen down, pick up the phone, give us a call, Clark Law Firm, 570 307 0702. Somebody working for you. 570-307-0702. And keep listening to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'm here with you each and every week at this time on this station. I have been doing all things Marcellus as my weekly radio show since 2010. So we're not stopping. We are not stopping, so make sure you tune in each and every week. Remember, the radio show is never meant to be specific advice, but general information. Like to have a good time, like to uh, spice it up some. I know we got people working out, listening to the show, so we like to have a good time with the show. So this is in ways to me sometimes therapy because I get so excited uh, and I get so frustrated. I get so so frustrated, you know. So we're talking amendments, modifications, and ratifications, but you know, I just said about getting so frustrated, just sparked something to me. So let me give you, this is a good example as to how companies can sometimes operate. So I have a client and we're negotiating actually an amendment, modification, ratification, and we're working on whether we can eliminate the mandatory arbitration. We don't want to have arbitration. As anyone who listens to the show knows, arbitration is bad in my opinion. We do not want arbitration. We do not not want arbitration and if the company says hey yeah well arbitration is good for you say well then you should be really happy because i'm going to ask you to take it out so if it's good for me and i don't want it why in the world would you object to that company well they'll object to it because they know it is really good for them and generally not what you want so we're having a dispute and we're trying to get rid of this mandatory arbitration. And I can tell that in the process of these negotiations, I can tell that I'm 95% confident we're going to get rid of the mandatory arbitration because we've assessed the leverage. We understand where we're coming from. We understand the situation and we're pretty confident that we're going to be successful. Client understands we're all on board. This is a big area and we're really pushing hard on this area. So I talked to the person at the company. Now, this person actually worked at the company. So I talked to him in the morning, let's say around 10 o'clock in the morning, go through and say, listen, man, we're really stuck on this point and we want this uh, no mandatory arbitration. We want to be able to go into federal court in the event that there's a dispute over this lease or this document. We want to make sure that we can go into court and not get shifted into arbitration where you're going to milk us of money. We can't set precedent and it's going to be so cost prohibitive. We just can't afford to do it. So we want to go into court where we can set precedent if we win, but we know you don't want that. So we're pushing that. So we say we want court jurisdiction. So I tell the person they're going to go and check with uh, my always favorite management and see if they can do it. And I have, again, an extreme level of confidence that we're going to be able to get this term that we want of no arbitration and federal court jurisdiction in the event of any dispute. So it's 10 o'clock. I say, okay, you know, all right, well, I'm going to check back. I'll let you know. I said, well, hey, listen, I got a call uh, here coming up. And this is like a little bit till 10. They said it was 945. So I got to call at 10 o'clock and then I'll be free and then we can find out what's going on. So I go, I get on my 10 o'clock call. <laughs> So I go, I get on my 10 o'clock call. As I'm on my 10 o'clock call, it's now like say 1030, I get an email from my client, the other client that I've been doing negotiations where we're trying to get rid of the arbitration. I get an email from that client saying, hey, Doug, 
so-and-so, the guy who I'm dealing with the company, just called our house and spoke to us and wanted to find out if we would agree to allow mandatory arbitration. So let me say this again. 9.45, I talked to the company person. I say to the company person, okay, I have a 10 o'clock call and then let's touch base afterwards to see if you have the response that arbitration will be eliminated and we can go to federal court. I get on my 10 o'clock call, the company guy, you think I can't make this up, picks up the phone and calls my client at their house and tries to get them to agree to allow mandatory arbit arbitration, to allow it, knowing that I'm on the phone on another matter, <laughs> calls my clients, calls my clients to try to get them to agree to allow arbitration to stay in the agreement. But of course, my clients were educated, informed, knowledgeable. I'm not out there operating rogue. I am talking to my clients. We're communicating. We're on the same page. So they know, they're like, what in the world are you calling us for? Why are you not talking to Doug? Why are you calling us directly? Talk to Doug. Talk to Doug. <laughs> so what did this person do? They waited till they knew I was going to be on the phone. Then they went to my clients without ever telling me they were going to do that. Never mentioned it. Not only not mentioned it, but waited until I was on the phone in a different matter and then called the clients and tried to get them to agree to the exact opposite of what this person and I were negotiating to try to get them to agree to allow arbitration. When I just told the person that we needed no arbitration in order to move forward. Now to me, that's pretty low. Well, there's a lot of words I can say to that, but that's pretty low. And I, you know, look, you see low things, you know, you see people do things that you scratch your head and say, wow, that's pretty amazing. But this one, again, I wasn't surprised, not surprised, but I said, wow, you know what? That's pretty, that's pretty disappointing. So I called the person, I said, you know what? That's really disappointing. <laughs> you know, it's really, really disappointing that I talked to you at 945, then at 10 o'clock when you know I'm going to be on the telephone and the whole other matter, you secretly call my clients to get them to agree to something different than what you and I just talked to. Thinking that you could convince them without me being involved to circumvent me, to convince them to agree to allow mandatory arbitration behind my back. So if they're doing that, imagine if somebody does that with a person who's represented, what are they doing to unrepresented people? You know, ask yourself, what are they doing? What are they doing? You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station. We need to get you this information. And it, it, listen, the point of that story is something to think about. Like, think about it. Think about what they'll do to try to get rid of, or in this case, try to get rid of uh, the requirement to go into court. So I said, well, listen. Why is it so important that you go into arbitration? Are you convinced that you're going to break the agreement and breach the agreement? Why? Why do you want to go into arbitration? That's a whole other discussion. And as you know, I do a lot of shows on that as well. But I would just want to point out, again, the need to get this assistance and to get help and to show how far companies will go in order to get you to sign or agree to something that's beneficial to them. So when they say they're your friend and they're landowner friendly and all of those things, you know, keep these things in mind, your partnership, keep these things in mind. What kind of partner goes behind the attorney's back and tries to convince you to agree to something other than what the attorney just told you that the clients wanted? You don't see that anywhere else. And here's what happens. Let me tell you something. So as a rule, okay, if two parties are represented, so if you have a lawyer and a gas company is represented by a lawyer, and we, I deal with this at times and deal with it now, I cannot talk to the gas company representative about the case without their lawyer's permission. But if the gas company does not have a lawyer representing them, then 
that person or that company can contact you as the landowner even though you have a lawyer. So we get to the bottom of that early saying how we want to move forward and make sure we have a plan. But in my opinion, you know, it's purposely calculated that, hey, company guys don't want to ever have lawyers. Companies don't want to have lawyers unless they have to because they want to be able to reach out and contact you directly. They want to circumvent your own lawyer when they can. And they'll do, I've experienced quite a few um, what I would call questionable moves you know, questionable moves. So we got to keep that in mind. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. Give us a call. All representation, oil and gas related matters, regardless of your location, regardless of size of your property, have one, two acre, half acre clients, have thousands and thousands of acres, uh, clients that own thousands and thousands of acres. So Give us a call regardless of location, have clients all across the country, other countries, as long as that property or royalty rights are in Pennsylvania, 570-307-0702. So talking, I'm going to get back to these lease amendments, modifications, and ratifications. Again, these things are hot now, and they're going to be hot, in my opinion, probably for years into the future. And what is so, so important to always remember with any document that you were given, your mind should start turning and saying, okay, why am I being asked to sign this document? And I am telling you, in some cases, it's not a big deal. But in many cases, it is a big deal. And in many cases, you have the ability to negotiate for money, for better language, to fix and correct problems that should have been addressed in the past, you need to identify before you put your pen down on paper, you need to identify what I am signing. Could I have obtained benefit or can I have, can I obtain benefits? Can I negotiate this? And then how do I maximize that process and negotiation? Multi-unit wells, cross unit wells put the pen down give us a call lease amendment reviews modification or i'm sorry lease amendments modifications and ratifications give us a call let's do a review and consultation and get to the bottom of it and in, like i said earlier in tioga county you have all of these leases that are held for shut-in year after year after year i am going to tell you in my opinion a person who does this all the time I absolutely think and believe, and we're going to, we are starting to bring cases saying that leases have terminated. So in order for a company to protect themselves and say, well, we don't think the lease is terminated, but to be honest, listen, they're not going to tell you this, but to be honest, yeah, it may have. So what do they do behind doors at the company? What do they do? They say, Hey, this lease is probably valid but we may not still have a valid lease for any number of reasons. And one may be that we have had this well shut in for so long and the shut in language and the way we've shut in the well, we may have shut it in improperly because we didn't comply with the shut in provision. So it's a close call. So what do we do? Here's what companies do guys. They say, Hey, Let's send out the land man with a lease amendment modification and ratification and let's get the person to sign and then we will correct any potential problem we have. And let's present this lease amendment ratification modification as being a great thing for the person that, hey, we're now going to start drilling now. This is really great. Here's when the money comes. Uh, no, we're not going to tell you, hey, we may not actually have a lease here. Your lease may have expired. We may have shut you in improperly. And to cover our own butts, we're going to have you sign this paperwork. Do you think they're going to say that? No, no. But you need to know why they're doing it. And there's a dang good chance that it's to cover their butts because they don't have a valid lease or they're concerned that they may not have one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an opportunity for you. But you'll never know of that opportunity if you just sign. So what do we do? 
we're putting down the pen and we're picking up the phone. Give us a call. Let's do a review and consultation and find out what you got. And you may not get an amendment, modification, ratification for another year or two, but you listen to the show and you know that when I see those documents or any documents, the pen is going down. I'm going to the phone, 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. Give us a call. Do a review and consultation. Any and all oil and gas related matters, give us a call. Keep listening. I'm up against the break. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus, the show for you, the landowner. And also, give us a call. Again, I represent landowners, only landowner and royalty owners. Never representing the company, never ever will. Regardless of your location, regardless of the size of your property, give us a call. Any oil and gas related issue, leases, pipelines, deductions, unitizations, amendments and modifications, you name it. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. I talk a lot about reviews and consultations because I do them all the time. And many, many times it goes on to additional representation. And sometimes it doesn't. But it's your opportunity to have what you're being asked to sign, have a review do a consultation, understand what it is, get your questions answered, and understand if you do have leverage and what you can do in order to take advantage fully of that leverage. And many, many times after review and consultation, the clients get tens and tens and tens of thousands and many times hundreds of thousands of more dollars. And sometimes we say, hey, look, we can improve this. We can improve that. Here's what you can expect. And then you can decide how you want to move forward. But get your questions answered and know what the heck you're signing before you sign. And sure as heck, know about your leverage. If a company has lost the lease or they think that lease is terminated, and they know that in order to take a new lease from you, they're going to have to pay a half a million dollars and at least 3% higher in royalty. Or they can send a landman out who works for the company, not you, the landowner, and say, hey, if you can get these guys to sign a lease amendment, modification, and ratification, we don't need to take a new lease. We just save $500,000. Then we also save 3% on royalty under the terms of this lease for the life of the lease, which is going to be, let's say, another hundreds of thousands of dollars. So by one person who should never have signed an amendment, modification, and ratification, it is possible, very possible, that a company could save a half a million, a million, or more dollars. So there's not much of a risk to send someone out to try to get you to sign something. Because many people, unfortunately, will just sign whatever they or somebody puts in front of them. And that's a shame. That's a shame because those are the people who are getting really taken advantage of. And don't get the reputation as a signer. You know, don't be a signer where a company says, hey, John Smith will sign anything. Get, let's go to John. Let's go to John. Let's go to John. Do not get that reputation. If you have that reputation, stop it now. Stop it now. You're not going to just be a signer who will sign everything that you're given and never ask a question. Because even if you're getting $100,000 a year in royalties or more, you might be able to get double that. You might be able to get hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash payments by signing these documents. So just because you're doing well doesn't mean that you're getting treated fairly and doesn't mean you couldn't be doing better. And if you don't care about yourself, care about your family and care about future generations, and maximize your circumstances. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time for All Things Marcellus on this station. And give us a call, 570-307-0702, and learn about representation and services and see if we can help. Remember, I do all of these myself. You know, if we do them by phone, you're going to talk to me. I review everything, and I take this extremely serious, extremely extremely serious so learn and see if we can help you you have all clients of all types all types you know 
every type of person we have as a client and have had, and I really want to hear from you because we want to help you out. So again, these amendments, uh, modifications, and, re and ratifications. So I've kind of been focusing on the problems where you may be given a lease amendment modification and ratification and that lease may have terminated or you may have a really strong argument that it terminated and therefore you have leverage for either a new lease or to add additional terms to the amendment modification presented to you to potentially get a cash payment to increase royalty percentage to increase or improve your royalty calculation method we need to look at all of these issues now I'm telling you that I believe totally that many times it's happened in the past and will happen many, 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 many more times in the future that people will be presented and sign amendment modification and ratifications for terminated leases, leases that have already terminated. So if they're coming out and trying to get you to sign that document, we talked about what the motivation might be. It may be easily a half a million, million or more dollars. So that's the motivation too to maybe lean on you to try to get you to sign, maybe, just say maybe, maybe make some misrepresentations or keep some information from you because then you may sign. And that would be a heck of a feather in a person's hat if they can get you to sign a ratification of a terminated lease and then they don't have to pay you that $500,000 bonus from our example. Boy, that guy looks like a star when they go back and say, oh yeah, hey, look, I got Mr. Smith to sign. So that's just one part of it. And you can imagine right there, that's an enormous part. But let's go one other step. And let's say that, well, maybe uh, your lease hadn't terminated, but there's other reasons why you have leverage because if you don't agree to the amendment modification, the company may not be able to develop under your lease, which would then force them to have to make a new lease offer to you or skip your property, which they're probably not going to do, but we would have to get into that in a very detailed, um, specific analysis. So if you can't, if your lease, we know say, you know, hasn't clearly hasn't terminated, but you have leverage. Now let's talk about how do we draft the document to protect you? Maybe we can have more wells to be drilled in a designated time frame. Like say, Hey, I'll sign this, but you have to drill two more wells in the next three years, some sort of positive motivation to get you to sign. Well, then you need to look at what the documents say, because I'm going to tell you, I had this discussion with this land guy and said, okay, well, we're going to do the amendment modification. We're going to change it. Like we said that, uh, we were going to change it to meet the requirement. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that any units that we record after today, they have, they can be larger than 640 acres anytime we do after today. But since your property is currently in two units that are 600 acres or 640 acres or less, we can't change that. But whenever, if we're going to do a new unit with the remaining part of your property and we're going to put that in a unit, well, then we can put it into a larger unit up to say 1200 acres. So they say, say ver words, words, they say, so if you have, well, I'm going to give some numbers. Let me reset this. So you got a hundred acres. You have 80 acres in two units and you have 20 acres. that's not in a unit. The 80 acres that are in two units are in units that are less than 640 acres. Your lease says that you can't be in a unit larger than 640 acres. So you have 20 acres that are not unitized and the company says, Hey, we want to put these into a unit and you say, okay, uh, they want to put them into a larger unit, but you don't want the existing units to be expanded. So you say, okay, I'll agree to this amendment, but you can only use this 20 acres as the only part of our lease that could be in a larger unit. So company, we agree to this, there's other things involved, a lot of other stuff, but to make this simple. So get the paperwork and paperwork says, yes, any future units that we record after today's date can be over 640 acres. Well, again, what do you think? I'm an idiot guys. If they think I'm an idiot, what, you know, what are they presenting to people who don't have the experience? Well, the company could easily file an amended unit because it would be after the date that the person signed a document and make the existing 600 acre unit enlarge it to a thousand acres. So it's a massive loophole, which is, I was easily able to identify, but not something certainly most people would have because they don't have the experience and don't deal with this all the time. So number one, 
They could be coming to you and your lease could be expired and they're trying to get you to sign. And they're certainly not going to tell you the reason why we're doing this is because we think your lease expired. But then after that, even if you don't have an expiration on your lease and or an expiration issue, you could have a situation where they say, okay, yeah, we're going to give you paperwork that says that we can put this other 20 acres that's not currently in a unit that we can put that into a larger unit. But hey, don't worry, we're going to keep the units that you're in the same size. You say, okay, well, maybe that sounds good. But then you get the paperwork and it's not at all what it says. It's not at all what it says. And you're bound by what you sign. You're bound by what you sign. So that's why we need to do reviews, consultations, and potentially other representation. Give us a call. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember to join me every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. Also, reminder, go check out the websites. Whether you're looking for information, you want to learn more about me, the Clark Law Firm, check out the websites. PAGasLeaseAttorney.com, PipelineAttorney.com. Again, PipelineAttorney.com. I've done so many pipeline agreements, deal them all the time. We do reviews, consultations, negotiation, representation. Go to pipeline, uh, PipelineAttorney.com if you have any type of pipeline agreement and learn more. As always, the radio show, the websites, they're not specific advice, but use them as a general resource of information. Frequently asked questions, techniques, leverage assessment. Explore the websites and Today's radio show will be up and available on the websites Monday morning, Monday morning. So check out, if you can't listen each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus, you can go to the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Go check them out and give us a call. See if we can help you. Reviews, consultations, any and all oil and gas representation, 570 570- 307-0702, 570-307-0702. I have to always say it, regardless of your location, have clients now active in Green, Washington, Allegheny, Westmoreland, Armstrong, Wyoming, Susquehanna, Bradford, Potter. Um, I think it just concluded one in Butler. Uh, Lycoming have somebody now. Uh, Tioga, of course, and Potter, and so on. So just really, Wyoming, encourage you, give us a call. Use the, use the review and consultation as a great service, and then see if there's more that you, you want to do or need to do. Or, hey, that may be good, but gosh, let's start making sure that we're signing documents and we're informed. So I want to take a break here for a moment and talk to my, uh, my Tioga County people. And I just want to, you know, every once in a while I like to do this to remind everybody, look, we are going to file and we're ready to do so um, very, very soon. Our first in Tioga on one of the leases saying that Sweppy has violated the terms of the lease by shutting in these wells. And let me set the scene. And what this is, this is a commercial alert. Okay, guys, this is a, a commercial here for this, this final segment. Here's what I am looking for. And this is something there's a lot of people out there. I am looking for people in Tioga County who are held by a shut-in well that has never produced gas. If you've ever received royalty payments under your lease, then it's probably you're not probably in the category that I'm looking to try to do a review for. What I am looking for is, and because these are going to be big fights, we need to make sure that we have the right clients for this. So I'm looking for somebody that has at least 100 acres of property or royalty rights, at least, that there's never been any gas production, that you've been held by a shut-in well for eight years or more. So over 100 acres held by a shut-in well for at least eight years or more. If you're in that scenario and you've not received a royalty check, I really want to hear from you. And for people in this scenario, I am doing reviews and consultations at no charge to see if you have a claim. 
to see if we think there's a case to bring against the gas company based upon your scenario because we need to stop this. We need to stop these vertical wells holding people year after year without production. As I say, that was never your intent when you signed the agreement. That wasn't what was told you was going to happen, and we need to stop it. In my experience, you see nothing like this anywhere else in Pennsylvania. So we need to break this up. And I talked earlier about you know, rev amendments, uh, ratifications, and modifications. Well, again, many of these leases may, may have terminated, and I certainly think that some have. And we're taking that fight on. I'm taking that fight on. And I want to hear from you to see if you have a fight that we can take on as well on your behalf. So if you have 100 acres or more and you've been shut in for at least eight years and have not received any royalty payments, I want to hear from you. And if you're about to get or you're sitting on a shut-in check and you want to do a review and consultation, don't cash that check. Put it down. Pick up the phone, give us a call, 570-307-0702. Get me your information. We'll tell you what we need. Give me a little bit of time to do the evaluation, and we'll get back and say, hey, I think you have a claim, and I'll explain it. Or, you know what, in your scenario, you may have a claim, but it might not be one that makes sense to pursue. Or, hey, look, I don't think you have a claim. I'll give you the honest assessment. But I am trying to identify the best possible cases to bring to stop this from occurring and to get you out of this year after year shut in and no royalties. This situation is a big problem and it's one that we're going to tackle. So I want to hear from you. I want to do a review and consultation, um, a review and evaluation as to whether you have a claim. And again, there's no charge for that in this type of case. If you have over 100 acres and you've been shut in for eight years or more, I need to get a copy of your lease, so do some research, review, and determine, do I think your lease is terminated? And then we have a frank, honest discussion about it. And then what can you do about it? And you're under no obligation. You don't have to do anything. You can say, hey, thanks for the information. It's been nice talking to you. Whatever you want to do. But I want to make sure that, because uh, I know there are great cases out there that we can, I believe, stop this. So I want to encourage everybody who's in that position who we can potentially, I can potentially help, give us a call, 570-307-0702. Again, if you are leased to, and, and it could be other companies too, but it's generally Sweppy. Now Rockdale has picked up some of them. But if you are eight years or more shut in and have 100 acres or more, have not received any royalty, no other reason that you're held in, I want to hear from you, 570 307 0702 free evaluation no charge whatsoever we just want to see if you have those issues and also i want to just touch on here while we're doing commercial stuff the multi-unit well consent documents stop signing them pick up the phone give us a call cross unit well stop signing and as i said before these lease amendments and modifications we have to stop signing those we have to pick up the phone, put down the pen. People are literally losing out and are going to lose out on tens and tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands. And honestly, in cases, into the millions of dollars. And we have to stop that. We have to make sure that's not occurring. All right. Well, we're coming up against the end here. Remember, keep listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm each and every week at this time on this station. And remember, let's put the pen down, pick up the phone, give us a call, 570-307-0702. Stop signing bad agreements. The landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. And most importantly, have a wonderful week, everyone. I'll see you next week.